Hey guys, kia ora, kia ora, kia ora, and welcome back to this week's podcast episode. I am so excited. Um, we had a beautiful, beautiful weekend celebrating Mets. He um, won his grand finals for rugby, which was freaking incredible. And this podcast is actually inspired by it because I, after he had one, obviously we're celebrating and all the things and I did a little story about kind of his story um, and how I was talking about different types of growth and stuff like that. And I had a few women reach out to me and just be like, wow, I never thought of it that way. Uh, can you speak more on it um, and all the things? Uh, there was also a question in there like, how do you have these kinds of conversations? Um, so I'm going to talk about that today. And I actually had a podcast with Mets in the past um, but I can't actually remember if we spoke about how we have these conversations on that podcast honestly I don't think I even listened back to it so uh, we're gonna do it fresh on today's episode but I want to talk about Mets I'm so proud of that man um, he has come such a long way by the way everything I'm talking about today he said it's okay to talk about <laughs> at first he was like it's okay babe you don't need to talk about me but I'm like no telling him why I want to talk about him he's like okay yeah sure um but you know if I if I talk about like Mets's story um, he was playing I believe he was playing like a cookies tag game when he um injured his ACL um, and then he couldn't really play after that so he had injured his ACL not really did done anything about it it wasn't until he was in Melbourne with me and you know he was just he was just in pain and like thinking like just hacking it kind of thing and um, we got to it got to a point where he was like okay I need to do something about it so he went in to get it checked and they're like yeah you need to get you need to have surgery um and he had his surgery and honestly like when they won the grand finals on the weekend we were driving home and i was like remember when you had surgery like i was actually quite worried um he, we went to a private hospital and it was during covid um so you, i couldn't really stay with him or anything but when i went to see him I had dropped him off to get the surgery and I went to see him afterwards to give him food and see if he's okay and all the things and like just seeing him in that state I was like oh, holy shit like it was very interesting and like to the fact that I had to feed him and all the things like it was it was a full-on like surgery and then the next day taking him home and having to like the nurse had wheelchaired him out to the car and then trying to get him into the car and it was just like fuck like and we lived up like our room was upstairs at our house at that point so it was like having to get him upstairs and like there was no way he could come down those stairs um and he was such a good like patient as well like he was trying to do everything on his own and obviously I was doing the best that I can and all all that kind of stuff but it was a process and he recovered really well and um on reflection he had talked about in those moments like just feeling quite depressed I remember there were moments where you know we'd have conversations he'd be quite upset just because like it's like you love this thing imagine like whatever you love right now whatever for me it would be like coaching right if I was like coaching one minute doing my best doing these cool amazing you know clients and all the things having the life that I freaking wanted and all the things and then all of a sudden it was kind of like are taken from me right and then you have to go through this process of trying to get back up and this was same when I got fired from you know being a flight attendant it was like fuck you had to pick yourself back up and it goes through a moment of you know depression or whatever you want to call it and he yes yeah, you know stopped training couldn't really move his mobility all that kind of stuff gained a lot of weight which wasn't you know which was really different for him like his eating habits and just staying in bed all day you know because he couldn't really move and all all the things and it was really really tough moment um and then you know him slowly like even the fact like he had talked a lot about like I want to get back into footy you know he was trying to do his mobility rehab all of that kind of stuff that shit hurts you know um and he was yeah doing his rehab and then going through you know mobility spending money seeing people for these things and you know actually training again and then he you know was going to find a rugby club so even wanting to go to a rugby club in the first place and then finding one like I just like when he 
was telling me like he's going to go. I'm like, do you want me to come, like, help you? And he's like, no. And I'm like, are you anxious? Are you scared? Like, you've got to go up to a club and be like, hey, guys, like, can I play? Like, can I be in your team? Um, and he went to different ones and they didn't fit. And then he finally found, you know, Footscray. And then keep it like keep showing up to those trainings and the hard work and the dedication and you know that man is so hard on himself like last year he's just like i'm not good enough i'm not fast enough I'm not, i don't know if he said i'm not good enough but like i'm not fast enough i'm looking like a bit you know bigger you know like stuff like that so he worked his butt off this year you know trying to do all the things he's so much faster um the games that he's been having like scoring two one two tries you know per game and just, you know, it's it's really incredible to see the amount of positivity as well, like just the, the, the changes, you know, and it really does make a huge impact on your mental health, your mental state. So it's just like seeing all these changes and him, you know, his hard work and dedication and stuff really paying off um and him you know them winning the grand finals i'm like fuck you like i actually had no doubt once they were you know the way that they were playing and all the the things he was doing i was like once they got to you know the finals i was like you guys have this like there's no doubt in my mind that you're gonna win and it was so funny because the team they were versing like they always win they're not one to win and stuff like that and their supporters were like oh they've got this in the bag like footscray I don't think I think it was Footscray's last time they were in the finals was like 2013 or some shit like that right so yeah they ended up winning and all the things and it was amazing to celebrate like once they won everyone running onto the field and I just took my glasses off and sat in my seat and just watched him run up and jump and celebrate with everyone and then eventually I went up and you know celebrated with him took photos and all the things but um I wanted to kind of talk about his story because for a long time, I guess he he would say things like, I don't have a story, you know, it's it's not um it's not that big of a story, it's not that big of a deal, whatever it is. And I think it's a reminder as well, just whatever your story is, there's a story inside of you, right? You know, I share my story all the time. That's Mets' story. You've probably got a story, and sometimes we compare our stories with other people's stories, but like we don't need to do that i think it's important to talk about your stories whether it's like me on podcasts and online and all the things or just in your circles with your groups with your friends and families because there is there is somebody there definitely is somebody who's going through a similar thing to you and it gives them hope when they see someone who looks like them you know who looks like them who's done similar things to them you know that have overcome these things when they're at their lowest point you know how many men have hurt their acls before that are islander that really want to you know do something in their rugby careers or whatever it is you know how many men you know have other people to look up to in that sense right you know so that's you know that's me it's right for me it's like oh me going for my dream job as a flight attendant and getting fired and then moving on and starting a business how many other polynesian women want to start a business or women in general you know want to be a life coach all the things it's so important to share your story no matter where you share it like yeah it's just and your story is incredible everyone has such an incredible story and this is why i love to talk to people so much because i'm like damn like tell me your story kind of thing because yeah there's so many amazing stories out there so don't forget to 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 tell your story and koe whakama like your story isn't any less or any better than anyone else's story it's your unique story um so so share it so yeah i was really really um happy that um mets won you know his grand finals and um i shared also as well that there was a point where so one of my top values is growth um growth integrity kindness but my top value is like growth right and for a moment there i felt like mets wasn't really growing and if you think about where his head was at you know obviously he was kind of depressed in a down mode because you know he had his acl surgery thought he could never play again you know stuff like that and i was out here reading books getting life coaches podcasts all the things like i was really leveling up doing next thing i was crying a lot and healing and feeling all the feels and all the things and i was next level like i've been doing this shit for nearly five years about six years um but five years with my life coach it might even be seven um 
I can never get the timings right. But, you know, so I was like growing and doing all these things and I could see myself changing, leveling up, doing different things. Right. And then I'd look over to Mets and be like, what the fuck are you doing with your life? Like, what are you up to? Like full judging him and everything. Right. Not really thinking about where he is in his life and what he's going through and stuff like that. And it was, it really got to a point where I was like, if you don't do something about this, like me and you are done. Like I have to walk away because this is what I want in life and you're not stepping up to the plate. So I got to go, bro. Like literally Virgil breakup. And there were probably, yeah, Virgil breakup. So, um, you know, there was a lot of back and forth there and, you know, him really trying and saying, you know, I'm trying, I'll, you know, try. And, you know, there were moments where he would try, pull, 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 um, what am I trying to say? Like, open up a book, you know, stuff like that. And it wasn't till, you know, I kind of stepped into, uh, and this is with the help of, of my coaches, instead of being like, do this, do this, work on yourself, work on, you know, they were really like, be the change that you wish to see, be the role model, be the person, you know, Gandhi, be the change that you wish to see, right? So instead of telling him, do this, do that, do that, like, be it, and he will see that you are doing it and you are being it and you are embodying it. And he'll be like, damn, I want to be more like that, right? Or or I don't, you know? <laughs> um, so yeah, be the change. And I started being the change. And I started, you know, understanding and thinking about him and his shoes and having compassion and empathy and all the things and coming like coming to the table and really like talking about it and communicating and that brings me to the point where one of the sisters one of the girl um one of the ladies on uh, Instagram was like, how do you have these conversations? Like, how do you even know what each other's values are? And it actually looks like, and this is something my coaches gave to me too. It's, hey, babe, uh, are you keen to do, have a meeting at Sunday, 10 a.m.? You know, like actually booking in a time, like this is an actual meeting. It's important. It shows the importance of it. It's like you scheduling out a time in your day where we can sit down with, you know, no one around, no family, friends, anyone like that. That, no kids around you know it's just me you one-on-one -on -one, sit at a table and let's talk and that's exactly what we did and I sat at the table and I was like hey like let's let's do this like what are your values and you know his values look like you know family um like you know we just went through each other's values and me talking about like growth is one of my top values and this is why and him being like these are my top values and this is why and I'm not gonna lie at first Mets was like damn like am I in trouble like what's going on is she gonna break up with that I don't know if he said that he was thinking that but you know like he actually didn't like it at the start and you know every week I'd be like let's do another meeting let's do another meeting and after time he slowly um came to he so like yeah let's do it because he could see you know the benefits of having those meetings but the meetings don't look like coming to the table and me being like these are all the things you're not doing and you need to do this and that and like it's literally when we sit down and talk about it um if you know what the circle of life is that's literally what i go off the circle of life so I look up the circle of life online but basically it goes through different areas in life so they might be like career work and career um hobbies and interests you know your physical environment um what else is there financials there's different areas of life right and we just go through every area and kind of rate it and see how we're doing you know in our romantic relationship like can we can I do more of something can we do less of something do you need more time together do we need more time apart like how is that how's your growth you know for me it was asking him how's your footy going and him being like oh, I need more time here or there or whatever kind of thing um me being like you know um I need more help around the house cleaning or on and these days can you cook something or you know what can we do to make it easier so that when like I don't have to worry so much about cooking like having those conversations and I think for like a relationship to be successful you need to have these open conversations communications it's not you yelling at somebody and telling them all the things that they're doing wrong it's you sitting at the table taking responsibility for who you're being in the relationship and them taking responsibility for who they're being in the relationship and working together as a team 
to get shit done, to have an amazing relationship. And I'll tell you now, any relationships you look up to, any that look freaking incredible, or you think they have, you know, a great love life and all the things, they are doing this shit. They are having hard conversations. They are taking responsibility for when they're being dickheads in their relationship. You know, sometimes at those meetings, I would turn up and I would just cry. I'll be like, babe, I'm so sorry. The other day I was such a bitch. I was whining and moaning and, you know, I talked to you rudely and I did, I like, you know, and I would just take responsibility for who I was being. And like, actually a hundred percent of the time he would come back and be like, oh yeah, like, you know, my bad, I should have did this or I shouldn't have did this or, you know, next time I'll do this to make your life easier and all the things right. So it's like coming to the table and having those really incredible conversations because you're, you're a team, right? You know, it's two people coming together to live a life together and an incredible life together at that. So having these awesome, um, you know, moments where you can communicate. Um, and at first it was a long conversation over time. It's small conversations. Um, probably now we probably need to do them more, especially because this footy season's over now. So it's like, we we're talking about this other day. I was like, what's next, you know, all the things. And, you know, we're looking at, you know, moving and, um, you know, going on holiday and him doing different things in his life and me trying to, yeah, there's a lot of things that are kind of happening, but it's, you know, having these conversations together, um, because yeah, ultimately you're living your lives together. So yeah, we need to have communication is so freaking key. So that's how you have these conversations. You book a time and a date and you sit down and you take responsibility and you ask for help when you need help. You ask for change if you need change and you sit down and look at each other's values. And sometimes you might even be like, damn, like we're on two different pages. Like, do we want to work on this or is it time to part ways? You know? Um, so really, and, and you know, I'm heavy on like growth is number one. Like if you're not going to grow with me, you got to go, bro. Like, to be honest it sounds really bad but like yeah you know that's not just in with a relationship with me and me it's just friendships as well it's family it's you know there's so many other aspects like so many other people that this involves because you know this is it's my values right we need to get clear on what our values are and why they are our values um but the point of um that oh that's right i was talking about so so what I had ended up finding out after having all these conversations and sitting down was that my growth and Met's growth were two different growths. Mine was going to a life coach, crying the tears, feeling the feels, uh, reading the books, going deep, childhood trauma, getting in there, all the things, right? And to be honest, because I was being the change, I was rubbing off on him. He was having hard conversations with people. He was doing things. He was thinking differently. And I was seeing it like, whoa, like, who is this man? You know, he was saying different things. He had listened to podcasts, but they'd be so different to mine, you know, um, and stuff like that. Books aren't for him. That's okay. A lot of people can't sit down and read books, um, audibles and all that kind of stuff. He actually listened to a few of my audible, all that kind of stuff, right? But where he was actually really growing was on that field, on the footy field. He was out, you know, kicking the goals in the posts all the time. I would never do that, right? He was running up and down the field, trying to get his sprints faster and all that kind of shit. He was every day, he was going to the field and doing something. He'd go to the gym. So his growth looked different to my growth, but it was still growth. It was a different type of growth. And he could have easily turned around and been like, but you don't go, you know, you don't come to the fields. You don't go to the gym every day. You don't work as hard as me here. You don't go to, you know, you don't kick balls over the freaking post hours and hours on end, right? So he could have easily come back at me, but did he? No, he didn't. So thank you, Mets, for not doing that. <laughs> but you know, it's two different types of growth. And it was for me to look at it and be like, damn, like he is growing. It just doesn't look like my growth. And um, me being like, that that's growth. That's a part of my values. You know, I'm good with that. Like, you know, what the hell? So I think a lot of the times uh, we don't give our partners credit like we're credits due because it doesn't look exactly like this. It's that whole like, you know, I want my partner to be romantic and then his love language being like quality time. So him thinking um, he's, you know, taking the night off instead of going out with his boys, he's staying home with you and watching movies in bed. That's his, you know, sign of romance, right? But you're like, no, I want him to bring me flowers and chocolates and all the things. And it's like, what the fuck like just two different pages right 
but it's like getting on that same page and being like oh so that's your growth and this is my growth what does your growth look like you know um when yeah the the conversations you have at the table are so incredible because it's like at the end of the day you know you're two separate people you see things differently all the things so you have to literally be like you know this is my um and if you're in a relationship please look up love love languages because it makes so much sense mine's definitely acts of service so mates could come home bring me gifts and all that kind of thing but if i come home and he hasn't done the dishes then i'm like what the fuck, bro like <laughs> you know kind of thing now i don't care because i know that there's it's there's more to life than doing dishes and shit like that and i don't want to do the dishes either um you know what i mean but um so it's getting on that page and making sure you're speaking the same language so a lot of the times for me it's saying oh okay I mean it's like this is what you know I need or that I'm doing like um say for example it's like I need help you know with groceries and cooking meals and stuff like that and it looks like this and telling him exactly what it looks like and then him kind of reiterating back what I've said to see if he kind of understands and most of the time he's got a different way of thinking like if I just said hey I need help with cooking you know his help my help with cooking and his help with cooking be two different things so it's literally you know putting out the details of what that looks like you know you need to come Monday Wednesday Friday you need to come to those dates with meals you need to cook them all the things right whatever exactly you need um because yeah our especially men and women we speak different languages so it's like breaking it down reiterating it back you know making sure that it's exactly the same kind of thing um but yeah be firm on your values get clear on your values a lot of the times we're not even clear on our values you might have like relationship values family values work values all the kinds of values right but make sure that you know your values are on the same page um and i think i'm gonna do another podcast because so many other things have come up um in this podcast just in my mind about things um about relationship things i think i'll do another podcast story a podcast episode um more about relationships if you want to hear more if you have questions about relationships please dm me on instagram or leave it in the comments below if you're on youtube um i think you can leave comments on spotify as well if i'm right but this is already at 22 minutes i hope you loved this episode um and i hope it helped you uh but thank you so much for listening as always i love you thank you for coming back every week i hope you have a beautiful week and i'll talk to you next week